Hello, Mark Red Larson here for the Dreamcatcher Podcast. Thanks for joining us. Today, my guest is Liz Carlin. How are you doing, Liz? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing great. It is, um, it's a beautiful day. Awesome day. So, um, so where you're at, how's everything going? Um, I'm out in Flagstaff. We are, I think, through winter. I'm seeing sunny skies and no snow in the forecast. So <laughs> That's a good thing, yeah. yeah. We've got some snow on our big peaks that are another couple thousand feet higher, but in town, there's no snow left unless it's a real shady spot. So. That is nice. No, yeah. that's snow can be nice. I mean, we actually had a tornado go through here at three o'clock this morning. So oh, yeah, geez. we've been really back and forth. We were like almost 90 yesterday, and I think we're going to be like high of 48 on um, Friday. So I guess that's what you get, large hail and tornadoes and um, the springtime, I guess. But yeah. I probably don't get anything like tornado. Do you get hail or anything in Flagstaff? Um, not really. We get something called grouple. <laughs> Okay, that's interesting. It's um, it's like it's like hail, but it's softer, and it's something about being at really high temperatures that it gets super cool, but doesn't come down hard. So it's like oh. it looks like it's snowing out, uh -huh. but when you look at it, it's tiny little little tiny snowballs. Oh, that's kind of I, I so, guess that's kind of cute. I mean, that's yeah. that's better than our hail, that's for sure. Yeah, so. we just moved uh. here. This was our first winter, so everyone's like, "Oh, it's grupling." Like, what's that? <laughs> Yeah, never heard of that. No, so. Yeah, no one's ever seemed to heard of that unless you live in it, I guess. They don't teach it in the textbooks. So you just said this is your first winter. Where did you move from? We moved from San Diego. Oh, wow. So was that tough to do from San Diego? Um, It's been a nice change. We're in a smaller town, much smaller town. It's kind uh -huh. of, um, and I live in a tiny town outside of Flagstaff, so it's a very strong sense of community. Nothing like you that, get in Southern California. Like No, so and that been, part would be nice. So Yeah, uh, so, so our, our kids are enjoying it, and I'm surprised. I thought I was going to hate the winter. I, I kind of liked it, but just don't tell anybody. <laughs> I don't say a word. So, well, sometimes it's nice to have the seasons. So, uh, mm -hmm. so, so why did you choose that particular place? Uh, well, we were ready to uh, find a new place to live, and we still have our businesses in Southern California. So we needed to okay. be a car drive away, a short airplane drive okay. uh, flight away. So we um, didn't want to go where it was too hot, like Phoenix and yeah. Tucson and um, Vegas are all really hot. So we came up to the higher elevation and gave it a try. And Sounds perfect. Um, yeah. So it's been really good. Okay. So your businesses you still have in, in San Diego, what are those? Um, we have our pickup and delivery laundry um, business. We process about 40,000 pounds of laundry per month. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot of laundry. <laughs> uh -huh. And we have two laundromats and we also um, do, we sub out our, um, our, our dry cleaning. So okay. that business, that business afforded me to um, my husband, my husband worked most of the business for about eight years um, okay. while I was if you want to call it paying the bills with my job in oh, corporate yep. and we grew the business so that I was able to retire my job. And that's when I got into real estate. Okay. Um, and so for the last few years, I've been investing in multifamily real estate and knowing nice. that you want to transition out of California eventually, just, right. you know, everything closer to home. And um, in the next three to five years, we'll probably sell what's in California. So I started a, co a, a coaching program for, uh, women professionals. Okay. And we also have a, um, we just started referring people to a health sharing program, which is, we started using it ourselves and we're so impressed with, we saved gosh, $1,800 a month in, in oh, health care. Mm -hmm. So I became a referral partner for them because when I love something, it's easy for, I talk about it all the time. So it's yeah, like, it I is. You believe in it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, so my I'm daughter was, my daughter was sick two nights ago okay. and she, um, she was throwing up and mm. sadly, um, our, um, emergency room is not a place to go unless you have a serious emergency. Cause you're just going to sit in the waiting room is what I've heard the room. Oh, really? Into. Okay. So yeah, it's not much so, of an emergency room then. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So I'm hoping that gets better with time. So anyways, back to my story, my daughter was sick and I was like, I wonder if I could like log in and get a telehealth appointment because mm, it's part mm -hmm. of the package. It's free. Right. And I logged in at about three 30 in the morning and they, I could have seen a doctor at four 30 in the morning. Wow. So I like, as I'm That's looking unusual. at it, I got up and went, my husband was laying with my daughter and I'm like, Hey honey, do we want to get an appointment for her? 
And he's like, no, I think she's okay. I'm like, okay, well, we can see a doctor in an hour if you want. It's 3.30 in the morning. That's amazing. Yeah. So I I've, mean, like, those are the things I've been very impressed with. Um, our wow. deductible, our, so very low premiums. Our deductible is $2,500 for the whole family. Wow. That's low too, especially mm -hmm. in today's with world, the United States. Yep. Uh, $7,500 out of pocket max. How did you find this company? Um, I guess it kind of found me. I was actually at my training for um, uh, when I was getting my master practitioner license for NLP. Okay. And I met a, a woman who introduced me to the program. And so we signed up and we also, we as a company, we saved money because we offer benefits to oh, our sure. staff. Okay. And we pay a portion of it. Well, now we can pay the same portion and they're paying far less and wow. we're paying far less. Win-win. So <laughs> it was a win-win that we, and we didn't force anybody on it at first. We just said, well, we're signing up and you guys mm -hmm. can pick traditional or non-traditional. We're not going to cut you off. And uh, one wow. of my employees was, she calls me and she goes, how's your new plan going? I'm kind of interested uh -huh. in what's going uh -huh. on. She's like, well, I got like a standard um, ref you know, referral for blood work from my doctor and the insurance company is trying to not pay for it. That sounds like today's world. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. So I've been very impressed with this company um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to referring people to I mean, the program that, and teaching them about it. That is so awesome because anybody that's on Affordable Care Act knows that <laughs> it's not going to be anything like that. It's going yeah. to be a nightmare. Yeah. Well, it'll be, you won't know what you get because it's like, like your friend where, well, we're not going to pay that or you might, you might pay part of that. You know? Yeah. And I'm sitting here thinking if I'm paying nearly $2,000 a month for healthcare, you better cover stuff. <laughs> I 100% agree. I think my wife and I have had that conversation. So yeah, um, I think most Americans uh, have yeah. sadly. So yeah. yeah, so I'm super excited to, to share that. And I welcome anybody to reach out to me that is interested in okay. learning more about it. I can hook them up and yeah, there's a, like an informational meeting once a week that I can dial people into and they can, if they Perfect. want it, great. If they don't, okay. no big deal. Like if it's not for you, Okay. Um, they have, a, they have a couple of like, if you're in the middle of dealing with cancer, it's not a good time to shift to them. They want you 36 months cancer free. And I can see um, that. And if you're working on getting pregnant, they suggest waiting to, uh, like not wait three months cause they want 90 days before you are pregnant. So those are the only two things yeah, I've noticed so far, um, too... that, you know, could stop so even like they, they can, they don't consider it a pre con pre existing condition. If you have, um, like let's say high blood pressure, right? Which right, most right. companies calls it. If you have it at a managed state and you've just been on the same medication and you are managing it, they right. just they don't call that a pre existing condition because it's a managed condition. Okay. So I they've got quite a few things. So I I've would had a like few this company. Ask questions <laughs> and I just, you know, as things come up, we find out to make sure it'll work for people. Yeah. Um, but the product is so affordable. And um, I just yes. found out at the meeting I was at last week, apparently, because it's health sharing, it's different than a than right. an insurance company. Um, they had two months last year where they had too much money in the bank. So they did not collect premiums from all of their members for two wow. months. <laughs> That's how you, you don't hear that. Oh. Yeah, it is a nonprofit. And they um, the other really cool thing, the back of the health card has, I guess there's some national registry of, of health insurance providers, and it's not easy or cheap to get on this registry. But okay. if that, that number is on the back of the card through the registry, then, right. in, then the doctors take that insurance a little bit more seriously. So because okay. when you show up, you're not one of the big ones. They haven't heard of it. Yeah. So yeah. They have a couple different ways that they teach us to deal with it. And then they, um, if you have to pay out of pocket, they'll reimburse you. Um, but wow. they want you, they want it to go through them because they negotiate the rates down because cash prices are usually more expensive than the negotiated rate. And that code on the back shows that they're they are eligible for that negotiated rate. So they've this they've done very a, interesting. Okay. Yeah, they've done a lot to really get people. Yeah, um, done a their service <laughs> that feels like insurance. Where a lot of health sharing, you pay out of pocket and then you get reimbursed. You have to submit everything. I have to submit some bills. That's probably the only, if okay. you want to call it annoying thing, where if you 
but for the amount of money I'm saving, I'll take yeah. the half an hour oh, it takes to upload everything for a six month period of time. <laughs> because everything in the Affordable Care Act is annoying. I mean, it's just um, if you have just a few things, it's that's a that's definitely a great deal. So, so yeah. maybe I, we can share in the show notes the, the link and stuff or information. Yeah, what I'll probably do okay. is have a link for people to get a hold of me since it is a referral program. I want to make sure okay. people come to me okay. to help Perfect. get them enrolled because it's very easy to enroll without um, without using my link. Yeah, like it's very okay. easy to, to enroll without me. So um, we'll get you the information you can contact me. Okay, and, perfect. Um, I'll be happy to walk people through it and get them dialed in. Okay, very good. So so going down, so um, laundromat, what, how why, how did you get into that um, area? Laundromats. I love laundromats. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, that's another uh, thing you don't hear every day. Um, <laughs> I have so many friends in the real estate world that are always asking us about laundromats. Oh. So this is an interesting, so how I first heard about laundromats is when I also heard about real estate was from okay. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Oh yeah. 25 or 30 years ago, somewhere in between those two, two numbers. Okay. I heard of the whole concept of the cash flow, getting out of the rat race. Yep. He had a board um, game. I, okay. Full disclosure. I never read his book. I played his board game. <laughs> hey, that works. I mean. <laughs> So, I mean, he's an awesome guy. I actually saw him in Vegas. So, yeah, um, he's, yeah. so he's his amazing. board game, like, teaches you. You have, like, it's it's like the game of life that we played as a kid, but you actually have uh -huh. a ledger. And you have to balance, like, if you buy a piece of property, what it does to your cash flow. And, and so you have some cash that you're playing with, but most of it's on a piece of paper. And so you're, like, you have to pay attention to... You know, if I take out a loan, I have to adjust manually adjust like your your balance sheet. Right. So, right. so it's kind of kind of funny, right? So I learned that real estate and laundromats were the two most interesting assets to me. Oh, that's interesting. So that's yeah. where it came from. Okay. Yeah. So oh. you know, I lived in Southern California where I was I owned my own home, but the concept uh -huh. of coming up with the money to buy investment property mm -hmm. was um like not really an option because of the expense. And oh, I also yeah. didn't yeah. really know too much how to do it at the time, okay. but just the expense alone, it's like, yeah, that's not going to happen. So it's like, I always wanted to own a laundromat. And at the time that I play, started playing the game, I was married to my ex-husband who is not very entrepreneurial. Okay. And so he was never willing to jump into things with me. I do have, I do have to give him some credit. We did buy um, a duplex out in Virginia beach. Oh, and nice. And um, it, it did. Okay. My parents knew somebody that was a real estate agent out there that had transitioned from Southern California out there and they oh, had bought a few properties. So I was Perfect. like, Oh, that's yeah. a good one. So he did that with me, uh -huh. but it didn't really turn into too much. And we ended up divorcing. And then later I met my current husband and my current okay. husband is working in the grocery industry. So okay. he has a lot of experience running big businesses. So he's wow, dealt with, yeah. he's dealt with, tough characters. He's dealt with all walks of life that come through a grocery store that can sometimes make your job difficult. Mm -hmm. So he had a lot of experience, you know, kind of dealing with homeless folks, dealing with, you know, all levels of economics. Like he's de dealt with all walks of life, basically. Wow. So when we went into the laundromat space, we didn't realize how useful that was because laundromats are sometimes in neighborhoods that, you know, bring some interesting characters true uh, yeah i never thought about that but that is yes i now that you bring that up yes i can see so that it's something that a lot of laundromat owners complain about and my husband just knows how to deal with it so he okay. just i mean that's really it. good okay mm -hmm. wow. so when i met so my husband was in the grocery business and knew he wanted to get out of grocery and so he tried a couple different things and nothing was like doing it for him he just you know, mm -hmm. so I was like, quit your job. You're miserable. I married you because you're happy and I like happy. So uh -huh. quit your job so you can right. be happy. Yep. And um, so he quit his job. And at the time I was working um, for the, the, the uh, gas and electric company the, in oh. San Diego. Okay. And um, I had a really good job there. So I was able to afford life with him not working, you know, just for a temporary time. And we didn't really know what he was going to do. And he decided I, I, I ran across um, a listing in, have you ever heard of Bizben? I don't think I have. Uh -uh. It's a, it's a website for people who are selling their businesses. 
So oh, really? it's okay. like Craigslist okay. for selling a business. Okay. And I'm not sure if it's a regional thing or a California thing, but it was very easy in, in, in Southern California. Okay. So I'm in there, I'm reading, I'm like, okay, this is, this is interesting. And you're like, oh, do you want to own a souvenir shop? Do you want a 31 <laughs> flavors franchise? Uh-huh. Like I'm looking at everything that's for sale. And right, he's like, no, right. maybe, maybe, no, no, maybe. Uh-huh. And I'm like, oh, somebody has a free <laughs> seminar on how to get into the laundromat <laughs> business. It's like, oh, I love that. Here? Uh you know this is is a good 15 years after i was first introduced to the board game that introduced Uh me to laundromats so i'm like well i can't go with you my my i have a son from my first marriage he had a a a baseball tournament so i'm like you go to um the the event and hear what it's about on laundromats and i'm gonna take you know i'll take my son to his tournament and let me know how it goes Uh and my phone starts blowing up like uh-huh. very quickly he's like how are we gonna do this we need to figure out how to do this and i'm like oh wow my entrepreneur <laughs> husband right a so um so we talked to the broker who was a broker who put on the how to get into the business and yes. they were basically able to come up with half the money if if they if they basically do the business plan and the the model oh, of where everything the, did yeah, so okay. let's say okay. if it was going to, the whole project was going to be $450,000, which would include the cost of the laundromat and retooling and promotions and all that kind of stuff. Right. They had a relationship with the bank that they could get half of that money and you'd have to come up with the other half. Okay. So we, and for those of you out there who have 401ks at your, at your big corporate company, right. you can pull a $50,000 loan out from your wow. 401k and use it to down payment on a house to buy a laundromat, whatever it is that you want to. <laughs> and they put it that. on, okay. they put it on your, uh, your, uh, paycheck that you pay that money plus the interest. It has okay. to be a loan. So whatever the interest, you're paying yourself the sure. loan. So it's not a big deal, but right. that just comes out of your, uh, your paycheck every two weeks. So okay. I believe most companies do allow that. So it has been a way that we have had people invest in our multifamily properties because they can yeah. take a thousand dollar loan out, put it into the deal. Now they own a percentage of the deal and they'll get money back, yeah, back just, to their yeah. back to their account. So there's lots of interesting different things that you can do. Um, so we took the money out to that and I okay, full disclosure, borrowed another fifty thousand from my dad. And we were in business. That works. And we bought our first laundromat. <laughs> we sold it. We raised the the um, the revenues. Sold it for a little bit more than twice what we paid for it. About fifteen months later, we wow. took that money and bought two more laundromats. Okay. So we have we still have the same two laundromats. One is in um, a very um, I would call it economically stressed neighborhood. Okay. And we pride ourselves on providing a safe and clean environment for them to come do their laundry in. Um, we have cameras up and we, uh, it is fairly well attended. A lot of laundromats are not attended. It costs more money for the owners to pay an employee to be there. Oh, wow. Um, but we have an employee there probably about 60% of the time. If it's busy, we want the, we want, you know, we, and, and that, some people yeah. don't speak English, so they need some help too. getting their, um, their machine started. Um, and we're very proud of that store because when we took it over, it was, they call it zombie mats. It was a zombie oh, mat. What a name. Okay. That says it all. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that is. Uh... So we took over a zombie mat and we really improved it. And I think the, the neighborhood likes it and appreciates it I bet. because we provide them working machines. We keep things working. The customer service the laundromat lot. is super easy, you know, have a place where they can get change, have the machines working have it clean and safe. Yep. That's, yep. All, that's what they want. And, and that can, will bring people in the door. I can definitely so, see that. Um, we bought that laundromat first, that one closed. And then the second one was just a few months later that we bought the second one. And that one's more in a working class neighborhood. Okay. And um, it's it was set up when we purchased it that half of the, or maybe about a third of the location was set up for fluff and fold and dry clean drop off. Okay. And the other two thirds were self-service coin machines and we retooled it and decorated it and made it look really nice and uh-huh. have, it gave us some character. We did that at both, both locations. They, they look really good. They, they look nice. Good. And, um, that store we started and because that store had the, the in-service fluff and fold, uh-huh. we brought, we brought the, um, 
we grew the fluff and fold. My husband, who, to be honest, did not do laundry at that time, but mm-hmm. he was at the store. So I guess he was doing laundry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Learn real quickly. Yeah. yeah. And then um, we grew that to, I want to say it was a, maybe 200 pounds a week. We grew it to about five, 600 pounds a week. And we hired somebody to help my husband. Right. And we got it to about a thousand pounds a week. Oh, wow. And my husband goes, how do we make this pickup and delivery? How do, because laundromats, and neighborhoods are like bound by natural barriers, a freeway, a river, and you just yeah, kind of stay, you, you might drive further to a grocery store that's in your little geographic right. enclave. Right. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. So it's just kind of how it works. So we knew that we weren't going to pull too many more new drop-off customers because people are only going to go, you know, yeah, five miles is, from their house right. to a laundromat. That makes sense. So we, I was actually pregnant with my third, my daughter. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And um, it's kind of funny. I go on maternity leave. I was still working my job, my, uh-huh. my my W-2 job. And I'm going on maternity leave. And I went out 30 days before maternity leave, right? Because I got right. 30 days. Right, exactly. And my husband had just gone to a conference. Okay. To, and he was at this conference. And he randomly walks into this booth of this company who is a laundromat owner that started a pickup and delivery business under a different name because there is a negative connotation of laundromats from people that have a lot of money. They don't want their stuff washed in a laundromat. Our laundromat is really clean. Our customers don't know that it's, that it's done in a, in a laundromat, but they just, uh, we we call it the facility. If they practice the last, we would tell them, but it's the facility. Okay. There you go. We, um, we branded it as two separate businesses and okay. we purchased. So I have a background in work management. I used to manage at the utility and at the city agencies. I would, I would track and manage um, maintenance on uh, water systems, sewer systems, recycled uh, water, electric, the okay. maintenance of what was going on. So you have wow. to manage the, the work is coming in and something triggers that the work has to be done, either inspection or regular right. cycles right. of things. And then you have to take it all the way over to the work being done in a regulatory environment it has to be done on time and you have wow. to document the heck out of everything. So I have a background wow. in very complex work management systems. Okay. So when my husband comes home from this conference, he's like, Liz, I found, I found something. I want you to look at it. I'm like, all right, schedule a meeting. I'll take a look at it. And <laughs> I swear I'm my friends, my real estate friends laugh at me. They think I'm the most thorough due diligence question asker. They're like, <laughs> is there's a question to be uh-huh. asked? Liz is going to ask be. <laughs> me in uh-huh. a very, it builds a lot of trust too, that with my oh, investment, oh, yes. I know yes. I've turned over every stone before making homework, a decision yeah. on this deal. Yep. So, um, so I asked this poor vendor, I had never had a client ask so many questions, but the background and how work management systems work. Like I spent about 15 years in corporate America, managing the systems and managing the work. So all it is, is you pick up a piece of a bag of laundry from a customer, you get it to the facility, you get it processed, you get it done, you get it billed and you return it back. It's just different steps, but it's right. the same thing. If it's a sewer problem that there's a sewer main line break or laundry showing up, you need a technical system to get you from beginning to end and Ooh. it needs to be flexible because yes. work does not flow A, B, C, D, E no. for every company. <laughs> Very, very true. Yes. yes. So, um, so I put this poor guy through the ringer <laughs> and I get off the phone with Steve. I'm like, you know what? I am like really impressed with their system. I think exactly. this will work. <laughs> so their system offered both, um, a, 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 a website for them to, to order that was integrated with their work management system. Okay. They offered Google AdWords advertising and wow, they offered okay. a customer service phone number. Wow. So it was like... <laughs> All we had to do was buy a van. That, and my that was a driver. Talk about a ready to go business. My gosh. Yeah. So we we grew that and I would say, um, like I said, we're we I would say for the first three years it was st- very steady growth. The first probably eighteen months, we doubled our numbers every month. Wow. So we were growing very fast. And then that when COVID really- happened, we lost all of our because we do both mostly residential, but we do commercial um commercial accounts as well. So massage therapists and Airbnbs. Oh yeah. And that would have definitely yeah. Has, yeah, that they just they want their laundry done and they need yeah. speed. Yeah. Um or next day service. 
So we, um, when COVID hit, my husband and I looked at each other and we're like, okay, what are we going to do? Yeah. We thought that we immediately it sunk about 25 to 30% of the business because the commercial dried up overnight. I can believe that. Yeah. And we said, uh, what are we going to do? And we said, okay, this is the skeleton crew of people that we would want to try and retain no matter what. We're going to try and keep them on staff because right, right. we weren't thinking it was going to be three years in California. Yeah. yeah. In California. And we said, let's just keep doing what we're doing. Let's not change a thing. We have our plan if it continues to tank. And within six weeks, we made up that 25 to 30% because wow. um, people were doing Zoom at home and doing Zoom school with their kids. They did not have time for laundry. So they were outsourcing whatever they could. So we're one went away. That's, you just never yeah. know. That is. Yep. Yep. Oh. Yep. So, and at the time we were the, one of the only companies in the County that were doing it. Now there's a lot more competition. Okay. So, okay. yeah. So are you going to expand more laundry mats? Um, my, my current with, like I said, all my real estate friends. So here's a little tidbit about real estate compared okay. to laundromats. Laundromats provide really good cash flow. Okay. You put your money in either buying a new location, like, like finding a place and building it from the ground up, which I do not recommend. Do not okay. do that. <laughs> Is that the market? You'll never make the money back. Yeah. You can't out compete the, the neighbors. It doesn't take much for them to retool. It like the amount of laundromats that. that are in a neighborhood is what the neighborhood can afford. Yeah. It, it, you just, you, it, so if you're interested in laundromats, don't build from the ground up unless it's okay. a brand. Okay. Um, and then um, over time, your asset depreciates because the equipment ages. It's just sure. not worth that much unless right, you own the right. real estate. But assuming you're renting the space, and you bought you own the equipment, the equipment loses value over time, but you're making really good cash flow, like really okay. good cash flow. Okay. Then you buy an apartment building mm -hmm. and your cash flow isn't as high, but in 20 years, your equity on the building is far more than a laundromat is. Uh, so when I originally that. started going into real estate, two things, I've been, I've been investing my real estate money into, sure. um, into, uh, sorry, my retirement money that I had for, before I was um, employed with my, where I was at the utility. And then when I retired from the utility or quit my job, not, not old enough to officially retire, but I retired uh -huh. I uh -huh. out of the job, uh -huh. um, I moved all of my money into accounts that can be invested in real estate. So it's another thing that people can do is if you're no longer working for a company, you can roll it into what's called a self-directed IRA. Mm -hmm. You can buy a laundromat with that money. You can buy, um, real estate, you can buy Bitcoin. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can really? do with okay. real estate money. Okay. And so I've transitioned most of my money into real estate right now for the way I wanted to diversify my portfolio. And I have mobile home parks and um, RV parks are in my portfolio as well. Okay. And, um, but what I learned is these bit, the, the real estate doesn't cash flow anywhere near like a laundromat. So I, I like having that. both because I've got great yeah, cash flow. Nice from my, my laundromats where it's depreciating over time and I'm getting some cash flow. Like I'm not losing money on the real estate every month. I'm making some money, right. but it's not replace my six figure income money. Yeah. Which is what I was originally trying to do. Mm -hmm. So do putting it into retirement has been really good for me because I don't need the cash flow and I'm going to cycle through, sell these properties and buy new ones at least once. So okay. my retirement's going to grow in the next three to five years. It's going to awesome. grow by a lot. It's going to take a nice big jump. And that's all ta tax protected. Oh, even better. That's mm -hmm. very good. So mm -hmm. I, I can't see you retiring. You, you have such passion here. <laughs> so, so what, I mean, what would you do in retirement or what do you want? It? What's your dream? I do probably in won't ever retire. I don't <laughs> see myself retiring, but um, I'll always be up to something. That, that, I think that's what keeps, I mean, yes. that's where I think a lot of people retire and then they don't do anything. I think it's good to keep on going. Mm -hmm. So, so do you like to travel? Um, I do. We, uh, COVID soured me a little bit uh, on travel, I can like at least out that. of the country. I'm a little less, I used to be, I've traveled actually all over the world. Um, I was a backpacker and oh, wow. college. I backpacked through Europe. I backpacked through Australia. And when I was in high school, I was an exchange student. So I have like nice. a travel bug. I've been to Canada and Mexico and 
And I don't know, ever since COVID, it's going to sound, sound like a wussy from somebody who has never been a wussy. I never would have described myself as a wussy. But I just, you know, like the number of people that I knew that got caught outside of the country that had a hard time getting home. Oh, really? It's like, ooh, what could happen next? Maybe I'll just hang out in the 50 states. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Um, I hear you. And yeah. just there's a lot to see in our country that I've been a little oh, bit yes. more focused on that than I have been on international travel. So we're going to um, Idaho this summer to um, a little town called Wallace, where real estate friends own a small motel there. Perfect. It's some historic motel. Um, okay. I'm in, um, I am in uh, Orlando quite regularly for real estate conventions. Okay. Um, in May, I'm going to be at, a con uh, at one of their conventions. I'm actually going to be teaching mindset on stage. And wow. Helping yeah, so that's that part of my NLP certification because I actually got my NLP work done to support this real estate group okay. that has a very strong focus on mindset. And mindset to me is the number one thing that holds anybody back on what they want to achieve. I would and agree. we work at the unconscious mind level. Like I was just working with a client this morning who, um, who had this belief. It took us a while to uncover it, but his belief mm -hmm. was that he wasn't good enough. And he's a 74, 73, 74 year old man with a wow. phenomenal resume. He's done a ton, was a wow. chaplain in the military, this amazing person. And, um, and, and he had this belief and it came from, it, it hit him like while we were talking, uh -huh. he's like, oh uh -huh. my gosh, I haven't thought about this in years. I was a really good um, uh, soccer player in college. And they asked me to referee a game at the kind of the end of my career. Right. And I made some calls that got some pushback from people. And I was good at what I did. And my I didn't necessarily have a problem with my calls, mm -hmm. but I got a lot of, you know, oh yeah, I see. On it. Right, right. His uncon our unconscious minds are very sensitive. They take things very personally. True. That logically he moved past it years ago. Like, is he going to sulk over the fact that, you know, everyone's mm -hmm. always yelling at the referee, but his, unconscious, true, yeah. Mind, yeah. Yeah, his unconscious mind wrote a story that, you know, don't do too much. Like, don't do what you're, you could be really wow. good at because you might not do it. You might hear other people's negative feedback. So we're going to keep you safe and keep you on this track where you don't meet your goals. Okay. So um, he has this project he's been working on and he hasn't been able to take it across the finish line. So my, what I'm looking forward to hearing is what I hear from a lot of my clients is I nailed it. I got it done. <laughs> I lifted what's going on in the unconscious mind. And that's what I want to do for, um, I do it currently for the, um, my clients for my business. And I also provide some services to the real estate Academy that I'm in. Okay. And that academy teaches how to find properties, manage the property, I mean, go through the whole process of closing the property, managing wow. the property, Everything. dealing okay. with problems. Like we had a okay. little insurance thing come up and we were able to go back to our coaches and talk to them about how to handle this. What questions am I not asking that I need to ask Right. and make sure we're protecting our investors money because these are not cheap properties. And, um, and then they will help us refinance and sell the property. And the number wow. one thing Perfect. that holds people back. Like, let's say you're buying a duplex. Okay. Duplex, you know, somewhere in the Midwest isn't too expensive. Mm -hmm. And you, your earnest money deposit, we'll say is, you know, $1,200, $1,500, maybe $2,000. Okay. Most of us that are in this space, we have, um, I don't want to say we all have an extra $2,000, but $2,000 is a stretch that let's say you lost yeah. it because and the deal went south. It would not be. not going to see anybody. Right. Out of yeah. no one's so out of gonna, business, nobody's filing bankruptcy yeah. over it, right? But when you're dealing with multifamily and your properties are 1.5 million, two million dollars, wow. you can be dealing with 10, 15, 20, 30 thousand dollar earnest money deposits. Yeah, those extra zeros is all in your mind. I, I can believe that. Yeah, I yeah. can definitely believe that. So through the mindset work that they do, they pull people out of I'm not good enough or I'm not smart enough or whatever it is that's holding us back. So that we're able to excel and purchase more property. That's Perfect. their goal. So they've added an entire mindset piece. Wow. And I became a mindset coach for them. And then I've also added on my coaching business. Um, aside from that, sometimes I have a real estate colleague that wants services outside of what the academy offers because I can do more in-depth 
one-on-one okay. -on -one, one work with people. I do what are called breakthrough sessions. Okay. And the breakthrough sessions um, is a process of uncovering what your negative emotions and self-limiting beliefs are. And then we go through the process of releasing anger, fear, sadness, guilt, anxiety. Um, I'm missing one. Sadness, fear, guilt, anxiety, shame. Shame okay. was one I was missing. Okay. And the self-limiting belief. And we release all that. And before we do the release, we actually look at people's values. So we break down like in this area of your life that you're working on, what do you value in career? And uh -huh. they'll come up with a list of 30 through, I'll prompt them to get through 25 to 30 list of values. Okay. And before the release work, it is so interesting. You have your value. Let's say you value community, fun, and um, challenge. Those are okay. what you value. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, we check and there's 30 of them, right? I check to see does, um, community and fun, is there any conflict between them? No, there's no conflict, but maybe community and challenge is a conflict for somebody. So we okay. mark that there's a conflict and we compare every single of those to each other. It takes about 40 minutes to get I through that, yeah. pulling out the values and comparing each one. Right. And at the end of it, you can see all these values that are in conflict. Now, another thing that I find very interesting, because I've followed a lot of different mindset people, mindset people over the years that are mm -hmm. talking about mindset, mm -hmm. and they always go to your beliefs, right. drive your thoughts, and your thoughts drive your emotion, and your emotion drives your action or inaction. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Well, the piece that's missing in what all of those people are talking about is what drives your beliefs? Nobody ever talks about it. Okay. Nobody interesting. Talks about their belief about where their beliefs come from. The beliefs come from the values. So if you have a list of 30 values and you've got a bunch of them in conflict with each other and one right. that's in conflict with a whole bunch of things. Right. And, and your belief system and your thoughts and your emotions are all based at the, at the value level. That's all mm -hmm. not congruent with each other. There's that uh -huh. kind of, spaghetti mess of all the arrows of all the things that are not in, that are in conflict. Right. It's, you can see how easy it is for people to not take forward action because it is. I really want to build a community, but that's not fun. Or I really want to build a community, but the, it doesn't go with challenge. And that does, you know, like you just have these internal, it's like these internal struggles that are so deep that nobody's talking about them. So before we do the release work, we look to see, well, where are your values? Mm -hmm. Well, the person I was working with today, has a difficulty um, closing deals for things for himself. Okay. And, and he also has um, difficulty like asking people for money. Be, and he knows he, he's done it in other areas, but when it came to what he wanted to create for his current project, right. he was struggling to do it. He's had people said, when you're ready, I'm, he had buyers ready to take his money and he couldn't oh, wow. take it. Oh. Guess what happened when we did his values today? Money yeah. wasn't in there. Money was not even listed as a value. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Because he was hyper-focused on all of these other things. We did the release work. We re-elicited the values. We put them in order. They were not in conflict with each other. And money, money and success were two words that came up after the release work. Wow. Mm -hmm. that's, that's very interesting. So how, do you, how do you do release? What, what, I mean, is that um, a well process or? I have a binder like that thick. Oh, yeah. And, it's, okay. and um, it, it's a very set script that's been developed through the company that I was trained from. Okay. They've been doing this work for about 40 years. Oh, wow. Um, so I went through, I, I'm, I am trained in what's called mental and emotional release. Okay. And that's their timeline therapy process. And they have scripts that you walk through. And what you're basically doing, so timeline therapy is if you were to close your eyes, everybody that's listening can close your eyes. Mm -hmm. Where do you see your future? Do you see it ahead of you? Do you see it to the right of you? Do you see it maybe on an angle? And where do you see your past? Some people, they're, they're for, ahead of them is future and behind them is past. And that would be me. Um, <laughs> some people are left to right. It's like a line going this way that they're standing here and over here okay, is the future right. and over here is the past. I'm backwards. I do something really crazy. Uh -huh. My future is in front of me and my past is to the left of me. Hey, and so awesome. when we walk through the release work, we say, 
you know, we ask, it's a, it, this is all work at the unconscious level. We're trying to get out of the conscious where we're thinking about everything because the unconscious mind is what is driving everything that we do. Mm-hmm. The values that are in there and the safety mechanisms like, Ooh, that, that, that instance on the soccer field wasn't good. We're not going to do anything that could put you in a place where you're competent in your skills mm-hmm. and somebody could tell you that you're not. Or somebody could challenge you. Right, so we're right, not going right. to do this project that you're talking about because that's scary. We're going to keep you over here. You're still going to be successful, yeah. but not in certain it, not things. In, yeah. Yeah. It, it, so so, so we decoded that through, the, you know, he had to go back unconsciously to the beginning of where this happened. And your your history is a combination of your current life. It can be during your, while you're, uh, we're in the womb. It can be before this lifetime, either genealogical or past lives. Okay. And you have to go back to the beginning. Wow. And like a gestalt, a series of things, you want to go back to the furthest one to knock it down. So it knocks it all out. Okay. Or if I just go to maybe the first event that I remembered as a kid, it might not go far enough back. Maybe there was some trauma during when I was in, you know, when my mom was pregnant with Maybe there was okay. trauma from a past life. Different stuff. Our unconscious mind travels from. Um, wow, I yeah, mean through that, the life and through the generations. That is so cool. I mean, that's yeah. just so. Um, so what? I mean, what do you want to be doing in five to ten years with this? I mean, what does your future look like? What you would want to do? My goal is to be working with um, with women in business, helping them punch through their their okay. goals. Okay. Um, I'm going to start offering packages right now. I'm doing three month packages. I really think they should be six month, but I'm okay. starting with three month where I offer a breakthrough session. So the interesting thing, when somebody is looking to make a change in their life, mm-hmm. we have four steps of, of helping people through change. The first one is r- getting rid of the baggage. And that's what I did yeah, with this that's... gentleman this morning, the last okay. night and today. It's about a, it's probably about a seven hour process between both wow. meetings to Okay. Pull out all of the information and then do all of the value elicitation work, the release, and then look at the values again. It took about seven hours. Wow. So it's usually about six to seven hours. Okay. So we do all that. And that's the beginning of the change. It's not the end of the change. He's You can think of it as like clean slate. I'm good. Nothing's holding me back. And then the second part of that I help people people with, with a breakthrough session on their own is creating a compelling future. So my next session with him, which will be before the end of the week, I have to give him some time to recover because it's kind of exhausting. I can see that. <laughs> so he, it's, they're intense. Um, and so we're going to do goal setting. So we're going to set up what are the goals and what, where is it that you want to be? Um, usually we don't look 10 years down the path, down the road when we're dealing with a breakthrough session, because usually there's something immediate that they want to be working on that, that they, sense, yeah. they can't get past. Well, yep. So we do look at future stuff, but not, not immediately. Not initially, right? We want to get them their, their immediate okay. results of what they're mm-hmm. trying to do. And then, um, many of the breakthrough sessions I've done in the past, people have gone on their own to handle the other two steps. And that's where they have to track and measure are they doing what they said they wanted to do? Because it's easy to get derailed and it's mm-hmm. easy to, easy. Um, it's, it, so it's kind of like you need the accountability to stay on those goals. I could see and that. And the other thing is staying very positive because there are so many ways that other people can impact and get you oh, off yes. your track because they're the naysayers. And yep. one of the biggest problems I hear from entrepreneurs is the number of naysayers and people who they're not entrepreneurial on their own. So they just can't believe what you're doing. I yep. kind of get a lot from people like how I'm doing so much. And it's like, I love it. I'm fi- I'm fueled by doing all of these different things. Yep. Um, I love it. Um, but that's not for everybody. And so the, no, the most of the world wants to go to their job yeah. and, and do their job. Yeah. Not me. <laughs> yeah. But- not me. Yeah. yeah. And so they, they look at you and wonder like, Oh, how do you, you know, not work? Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, I do work. It's just, you I don't do have work. To my own boss. It's, yeah. it's, just, it's, it's, you have to keep that momentum. So you do. the coaching piece that I offer right now, I'm doing a 12, a 12 week program. So it's the breakthrough session goal setting for the first week. And then the next 11 weeks are me two things. One, 
there might need to be some fine tuning of NLP that we need to address. If somebody struggles okay. with motivation, I'm able to put a resource anchor where they're anchored on their knuckle. They press their knuckle and funny enough, they're motivated. Okay. Um, because we create physical anchors. We Interesting. can do things where if somebody is uh, constantly scrolling on their phone. Yeah. We can swish away that pattern wow. so that they can not do that anymore. Um, well, you, you need so, to give that to the world. <laughs> oh my yeah, gosh. It might come after me if I give that away as a free, <laughs> yeah, <might. laughs> as a free service. So uh. My public service to the world. Um, and then I'm able to take a, 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 a self-limiting belief, like maybe um, something like I'm, I'm not good at bookkeeping, something like that. If somebody had mm -hmm. that belief. Mm -hmm. that we can take it to I'm, you know, bookkeeping comes to me with ease. Mm -hmm. Obviously they have to have training. They have to know what they're doing, True. but yeah. the mindset, if you have a belief that I'm not good at this, well, guess what? Every time you sit down, you're struggling because yep. your core belief, every cell in your body believes this is going to be hard. Yeah. Yeah. And you so by making that shift and we can shift from that belief to that bookkeeping comes to me with ease. And that's your new belief. And we do yep. it through NLP. Same thing with if somebody like, let's say the gentleman I'm working with here with his new belief system, mm -hmm. money and success are in there. But let's say he's not making as much forward walking steps through the coaching program. We'll identify that in a few weeks. Like, like I'm, I'm doing better with making the phone calls, but I'm still struggling to like close the deal. Well, let's mm -hmm. move okay. money up a couple ticks. Let's take the money that was number 22 of 30 right. and let's make it 18. Mm -hmm. Let's see what that does. Okay. Now the reason I don't make it number one is that would majorly disrupt the apple cart. And then all of a sudden he would be so hyper-focused on money. Nothing else. Yeah. Would okay. Be I see what you mean. Money. Yeah. We right. do it kind of a little at a time. Because he, I, I know him now after working with him, he doesn't want to have money as his main motivator. No, I, so you can, you can that, move things around with, it's all is. NLP overlapping. So yeah, I have a series of scripts where I walk people through going back to the root cause and letting it go. And they, they go into the, into the event, feel the event, let go of the emotion. And if it doesn't let go, I have some techniques to help them continue. Sometimes I have to talk to their unconscious mind and tell them holding on to this these feelings, the fear causes, yes. it causes, it is not healthy for the body. No, that's for you sure. You agree to release this so that we do not have health issues related to this fear. Yeah. And sometimes you just talk to the unconscious mind and you float higher up and further out and then you bring mm -hmm. it back. And it's, it's very hypnotic kind of what we do. Okay. And so okay. it's, a bit stripped. it's not hypnosis. I'm a trained hypnotherapist too. So I do follow up hypnosis tracks to wow, okay. a special, so if somebody's dealing, like say this person who's dealing with, um, with not being able to, to sell, like he can't close the deal. Right, I would right. create a hypnosis track that talks, talks to him of making the, the hypnotic suggestions of, you know, that he's going to feel co confident offering people the opportunity that he has to offer. And we together would come up with the, what those post, those hypnotic suggestions would be. Cause I want it to be in their words and the way they would understand it so that they, it, when okay, they hear okay. it and they go to uh -huh. it every night for 30 days to help reinforce all the work we just did. So that's where the coaching is very beneficial because I can help keep them on target. Yeah. I can help fine tune what we yeah. release to make sure that there isn't something lingering. I worked with a client um, last month where her self-limiting belief is there's something wrong with me. And we went and we did the, okay. the release work and she released that, but it landed on something's just wrong. So I went in and just did the self swap to get rid of it. And, um, I probably need to check in with her because we did that follow up about a week ago and I need to double check to make sure there isn't any more fine tuning that she needs. Wow. So did you know about NLP? How did you get started with NLP? What was <laughs> it a passion or how did you know about um, that? About six years ago, I started hearing about it. Okay. And I met actually the people who have the real estate mastermind, the, the real estate academy that I'm in. Okay. Um, this is before they had the academy. This is years ago. And I was talking to her and she had just finished her master practitioner license. And at the time I was doing some sales. Okay. It was side, side stuff. And I wanted to be better at selling people. 
And I had heard that NLP teaches how to build rapport and how to just increase Which is, the uh, comfort with people. Right. right. And I was like, oh, this sounds interesting. I think I should do this. So she goes, oh, come to this class. It was very inexpensive. Um, and I went to the class and I took it. I loved it so much. I sent my mom and my husband. Oh, okay. That says a lot right there. Yes. This is a really interesting one. So I talked about an anchor that you can, we can create right. an anchor for, um, for motivation, right? right? And I can press this one and now I'm motivated. The, um, the instructor of the course, the, the owner of the company, he taught my NLP. He, he was telling us how with his son years ago, when he was playing little league, mm -hmm. that he taught him to create an anchor on his ear for batting. Okay. Okay. When he's up to bat, when he's at practice and he bats a perfect one, he anchors the memory of the physiology of what just mm. happened to the ear. And every time he has a really good practice, he then anchors he it to the ear. The bad ones, you don't anchor. You only anchor the good ones. Just the good ones. Then okay. when it's a game and he walks out to the to the plate, he goes like this and it can knock it out of the park better. That's awesome. I like that mm -hmm. a lot. I, I have a personal belief that our next, because mindset's becoming such a bigger influence it in society. It's very a much. lot more mainstream. Yes. I am of the belief, this is my Nostradamus moment, okay. that the best athletes that we're going to see in this country in the next 20 years are going to have the best mindset coaches. And they I have can see that. I can, talent. I can, they can't not yeah. have any talent. Right. Can, sure, like, sure. But if you take a lineup of the most talented, the ones that are going to stand out have had mindset coaches from young ages, and they've been working on their mindset their whole life that they can drop. They know how to manage the mindset. That was a bad play done. And they're, they're back at the plate and they're not holding on to that last memory. So that's oh. my, that's my so that, prediction. That, so do you ever run into somebody with a, a terrible mindset that really wants to change it? I mean, and they're not able to. Um, sometimes there's a secondary gain that they're holding on to the mindset, the, the okay. negative mindset. Um, another really good example was this gentleman who, um, suffered from really bad PTSD, which oh, is somewhat yeah. mindset related. Yeah. And he was paid by the government because he was post, you know, he was a vet. Right. right. He, if, if, if the PTSD went away, so it is paid. So it is check. Oh, and so yeah, no, that would be. Required, yeah. It required a reframe that said, you know, you're pretty miserable. You don't want to stay this way. Right. Yeah. What would you be able to accomplish if you didn't have the PTSD? Yeah. And my mentor cleared the PTSD and he's making way more than he ever did on gov the government subsidy from the PTSD. Very good. I mean, so that... a lot of it is reframing how you look at it and making sure another example, this was one I mentioned in class is that you might not have the best mindset around, um, your, you know, maybe your health because mm -hmm. maybe your spouse attends to you more when you're not feeling good. And you want to drop the mindset and improve the mindset. But gosh, if I all of a sudden became healthy, I wouldn't get wouldn't as much get attention to... from my spouse. True. And yeah. he, he he gave us all the look like, can we all think of a better way to get some attention from <laughs> <Yeah>. the spouse? <laughs> True. True. Uh, that's pretty good. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. So sometimes there's secondary gain that gets in the way. Okay. And uh, trauma can also get in the way. Uh, Not that you that. can't get past the trauma, but when people are so identified with like that the trauma is such a big part of their identity they really have to be okay letting go of that identity and recreating themselves in order to let that go wow okay. so um uh, i do have another mindset coach that i worked with over the years and she was a rape a multiple rape, rape victim oh and she's wow. teaching mindset i mean you could i mean somebody who's dealt with rape as a society i think we all look at it and be like well of course you can have issues like yeah, you went yeah. through trauma and you know yeah. like the fact that functioning and it didn't succumb you well she is like she let it go amen like, i mean that's so launched. great i mean that's great she talked about it with no emotion so she, i don't wow. know I, she did not use nlp she used other other techniques okay i personally believe that the nlp is one of the few ways i don't know of any others but i'm not going to say the only way because i don't know what else is out there mm -hmm. that truly is rewiring your unconscious mind and for everyone who's listening the important thing to know about the unconscious mind is that your conscious minds that we live in every day, yep. the conversation Mark and I are having right now is completely in the conscious mind. Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, but I 
if, if my unconscious mind is trying to protect me from something, then even though we think our conscious mind is, is in control and is the captain, the crew, the unconscious mind is actually what gets you there. And if Makes the sense. crew is not on board with what the captain wants, yeah, you're the not captain gonna... is not going to get to where we want to go. Yeah. So NLP is all about getting alignment between your conscious and your unconscious mind and your values oh. okay. that drive your beliefs, that drive your thoughts and feelings, that drive your behaviors. We're going to get alignment in that. So when I say I want to go do X, Y, Z, I want to go close on five more apartment buildings. My unconscious mind has already let go of all the baggage, the negative, the negative emotions and the self beliefs from this lifetime, last lifetime, who knows where in my childhood that gave me a belief that I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I'm not smart enough. I'm not this enough. I'm not whatever. Get rid of that garbage. Yep. get the alignment and and we are unstoppable that is so cool i mean and mm-hmm. talk about helping people catch their dreams i mean that is i mean i would guess most people don't catch their dreams you know there's always talk about mindset you know they're too old they don't have enough money you know i think deep down they don't think they can do it mm-hmm. and it's like you know if i can do it anybody can you know it's, it's true it's true and it's a block that they have that's stopping them it's a mindset it's baggage. Yeah. It's baggage yeah, and, we picked up and it can be from a different lifetime. Yeah. Not even yeah. in this lifetime. And, and I believe that too. No, mm-hmm. I get people, you know, they, they almost get jealous. And it's like, I had one yesterday. He, he was really um, not very nice to me. You know, it's like, well, I didn't think you were very talented, especially to do a podcast, you know, and just kind of digs and wow. stuff. Yeah. And he wasn't on the podcast, but um, actually he was a college friend. And it's like, wow, where's this coming from? You know, and uh, I told my wife, yeah, it's, it's like, his, there's something there. It's his baggage, not yours. Yeah. And just, just make, you know, you want to make sure that your unconscious mind didn't internalize something that somebody yeah. else said to you, because it can be as little as a call on the, um, on the soccer field. Yeah. Yeah. That, like that you, you're some very client there. weird little plant that gets put there and it's like, Ooh, this might not be safe. That's what our conscious yeah. mind's job is, is to keep us safe. That's the unconscious mind's entire job is to keep us safe. Yeah. No, mm-hmm. it is. And you know, my mouth, I, my, I'm sure my mouth dropped open because I didn't expect that from him. It surprised Especially me. Especially a friend. Yeah. It's just like, yeah. wow. I mean, it, he just kind of went on and I, maybe he's having a bad day, but I think actually I was getting his real emotions out to me, you know, and it's just like, um, I told Cheryl, uh, my wife, I feel sorry for him, you know, mm-hmm. that he's not, not able to, because I, I actually told him, I said, you can do it just whatever his dream is. I told him how I did it, you know, and, and, um, I, but I don't think he really wanted to hear that, you know, it's just <laughs> not what he wanted to hear. So, but, right. so, okay. So you said you did some with coaching with women, entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. Mostly right now, I've been working mostly with real estate people that I know through the program. And I'm launching my, like, I'm in the process of launching my business that that's right. Coaching.com. The website's almost done Okay. um, where I will be um, serving people outside my immediate circle of people that I know. Um, So anybody would be able to come to me and get, and to work with me as a, as a, as a mindset coach for business. Okay, perfect. So, so is there anything that's still on the radar that you still want to do? Um, the big thing, because so many of my real estate friends have said, oh, longer mats, I want longer mats. We are looking <laughs> into the, we're looking into the concept of, um, remote laundromats. Laundromats okay. are a little hard to find for sale. Um, they're, po- they're, you know, we found out that they were pandemic proof. They're recession proof. There's always people who need laundromats. True. So, um, we did not know it was pandemic proof and post COVID, I would say there's far fewer laundromats for sale just okay. because it's such a steady business. Okay. So when I have, I have properties in a bunch of different cities where I have property managers and people that I trust and work with sure, sure. that I'm looking at the concept of purchasing a laundromat in one of those cities where I have a boots on the ground person that can help me if needed. And we can manage. There's a lot you can do managing remotely with the new technology. We can turn sure. on and off machines. We can unlock machines. Oh, wow. Really? Okay. Yeah, there's a lot you could do. Our current equipment doesn't have a lot of it because it's expensive to retool the entire oh, place. I, I bet. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you're looking at probably four or 450 to retool an entire 
um, inside if you were to gut and redo wow. an entire laundromat. Okay. So that that so normally when you buy a laundromat, you buy a few new machines here and there. Right. And yeah, kind of replace the inventory. Yeah. Yeah. So um, uh, so that's on the radar screen because I've had so many people express it. In fact, I have somebody who wants to talk to me today about a laundromat she wants to buy. Like, okay, I just stop. think that is so cool. I mean, that's yeah. just, I mean, you just so never know. That's one thing. And then this is a funny one. So we live in this small town. There's about a thousand houses clustered okay. together. It's technically we live at a truck stop. Like there's nothing yeah. here. So houses. Okay, that's interesting. Island. And so we're outside of Flagstaff. And we have no local grocery store right in this pocket of homes. We have really? to drive 15 minutes to a grocery store. Okay. So there's also very little retail space. There's a, there, right now there is seriously a pilot that has a subway and a McDonald's in it. And there's a, um, a small motel. Okay. So and that's very it. limited. Uh, that's okay. on our side. On the other side of the freeway, there's a few um, businesses, but it's more like industrial type businesses. Okay. So it's we're, okay. Out, we're out on the sticks. Well, okay. kind of, I can see the, 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 the forest right there. Out my window. That, that would be awesome. I, I mean, yeah, cool. yeah. I love that over part. the tops of the houses, there's a mountain uh -huh. with some lots of uh -huh. some trees, a lot of trees. So, um, they're they have approved the building of another strip mall on the side of the the of the freeway where all oh, the homes okay. are. Sure. And they want a grocery store. I don't know if I, you remember, but my husband has years. Yeah, before. right. Yes, yes. So <laughs> it's been it's been a hot minute since we mentioned my husband's background. So we want to own the store, the little like general grocery store in this little neighborhood. That sounds neat. It's interesting mm -hmm. coming back around there. <laughs> yeah. My, I, I tell you, I barely go to the grocery store. He was in the grocery store, grocery business for so long and he oh, likes, he likes grocery stores. Like he's just hey. one of those people I've been in the grocery stores for 20 from, from when he was 15 to Oh, probably his second. Yeah, I mean, like it's kind of like a home. Yeah, like, so he loves going to the grocery store. When I have to go to the grocery store, it takes me, especially since we're in a new town, right? Uh -huh. I had grocery stores before I was married to him. I knew where to find sure. my way around. Right. I walk yep. in and I'm like, oh, what side is the... Yeah, is the, I have to do a lot of searching know, like, and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, I can't find anything. It's like ridiculous. So I just give him a list and tell him to grab. That sounds good. It sounds uh, like a good plan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's pretty yeah. good. So mm -hmm. I think that's neat. So how? what's the population of Flagstaff? It must be pretty small. Flagstaff proper, which I am not in, is about 75,000. There is a okay. small, there is a, a good sized university there, uh, Northern sure. Arizona okay. University. Okay. Um, and it is a growing town. Like, whatever land is left is being developed. Is it? Okay. Um, they, they do have a housing shortage here. Um, and we just ended up a little outside of town, um, which I'm really loving, really yeah. loving. It is such small town life, friends with all the neighbors, the kids, like yep. piles of bikes are in, you can tell yeah. where all the kids are because the pile of bikes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's not something you do t today. You don't leave your bikes unattended no. in front of the, you don't so because they'll be gone. Comes, if yeah. you don't live here or have a reason to be in this neighborhood, you don't come in here. Yeah. I, I tell you the people who, because we're right next to the highway, the people who drive by it on the highway are probably like, who lives there? Why would you want to live there? And they just keep driving by. <laughs> you know, I, and I usually say, just keep on driving, you know, yeah, it's just, uh, exactly. Because well, exactly. uh, that's so, kind of the way yeah. it is here in central Nebraska too. You know, it's, it's rural. That's for yeah. sure. Um, in fact, 10 miles is the closest town. I'm out in the middle of nowhere, but it yeah, is. I mean, we, too, but I'm not, I, I guess I'm kind of in the middle of nowhere. I'm just next to a major highway. Mm-hmm. So, but the highway runs through Flagstaff, so okay, okay, you can't be too far. If you're in Flagstaff, you can't be too far from the freeway. Okay, no, I think you know, and we know our neighbors too. It is kind of a throwback to the way it used to be in a lot of this mm -hmm. country, and it's yeah. really nice because um, if you have problems, you can count on maybe your neighbors helping you out, or yep, or something yep, like that. Definitely. It's, it's very, I have very good. never given away. I lived in the same neighborhood for 12 years in San Diego. Okay. And I knew a few of my neighbors and I felt like it was a neighborly neighborhood. Right. I have never given away more raw goods, sugar, flour, sour cream, <laughs> butter. So a cup of and sugar. The whole the... As, oh, here, I have an extra loaf of bread. Thank you for the butter. Oh, thank you. Here's some cookies. Uh -huh. yeah, and it's it is. like, I have apple butter. I've been, I've been delivering oh, apple yum. butter. I've been delivered homemade sourdough bread, oh, that'd tons be good of too. different cookie treats. Like it's just been incredible. But no. I just love it here. It is nice. Yeah. And mm -hmm. until somebody, I mean, yeah, I guess you have to kind of like it because people that are used to the big city, I mean, because they can't figure out why I'm living here. I can't figure out why I'm living in Nebraska. And um, for a while there, our state motto was nice. 
I wonder how long they took for, to come up with that. But yeah. people, people in general are nice here. You know, um, we had some people, we had a blizzard in January from Utah and they said, people in Utah aren't like, they were from Salt Lake. And they said, you guys are so nice here. It's like, uh, it's just the way everybody is. You know, you're going to have people, especially in the eastern part of the state where there's more city life. But it, it's, I think it's a higher, you know, a little bit higher standard of living. You know, it, yeah. people have your back and... I think yeah, it's very I think nice. when you, I think it, it, there's a, just a stronger sense of community because you yes, meet each yes. other in the city. You can hop in the car and go get what you need. You can, yeah, yeah. like it's just it's very it is very different. So I'm I'm loving it. I'm loving the yeah. small town life, and Zoom makes it like possible for me to do coaching nationwide. Yeah, um, do ro- you know remote investing nationwide? Like I can do everything. We no longer are slave to the city that why did we all move to the city 200 years ago because that's where the jobs were that's where the exactly. opportunity was it's not that way anymore no no it's, i mean like with this podcast i mean i've done it from sydney australia i mean just about everywhere in the world i mean yeah in sydney it was 17 hours difference and it was really i mean different season different day i mean yeah it's just like <laughs> they're yeah it was just it's amazing yeah the technology yes. really does make it so you can be you can be like that or a digital nomad where you can just go, you know, travel yeah. and do whatever. That's for sure too. So, yeah. so Liz, anything else you want to share before I end the podcast? No, I will get you my contact information so that you can provide it to the guests. And if okay. anybody's interested in, in investing in, um, in multifamily, they're interested in business coaching, okay. um, interested in, you know, breakthrough sessions, like we've talked about and learning more about that. If they're, you know, anything that I've talked about interested okay. in health insurance, Perfect. if there's anything people are interested in, I'm going to give you a single email address and people can just message me okay. and I'll get them um, in the right. Um, Where they need to. Yep, yeah, Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. That sounds great. So, well, thank you for being my guest and well, thank um, you for having me. It was really fun. And I look forward to keeping in touch and yes. um, see what else is going on in your life. I mean, I, I, especially with the laundromats, you intrigued me yeah. on that. Yeah, <laughs> so, that is so neat. So, but I will let you go. And um, thanks again for joining us. And until next time, see you later. Thank you so much. Have a great day.